as we get started this morning, our, our, our sermon comes from the book of Romans, chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 1 to 8 today. Verses 1 to 8 of the book of Romans, chapter 4. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not count his sin. Now let us pray. Father God, as we come before you today, we ask that you would speak through us. Father God, we ask that you would speak through each of us today. We ask that you would open our eyes that we may see your message clearly. We ask that you would open our ears that we may hear your message plain. Father God, we ask that you would open our minds and give us understanding. Open our hearts that they are not only able, but that they are willing to receive your word today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What did Abraham do? Abraham heard God and he listened. He heard the voice of God tell him to get up and leave everything he knew, to go a place that would be revealed to him later. so that all the nations of the world would be blessed through him. Abraham was the son of an idol maker. His father raised him in a household and a, and a family where they carved and made little statues for people to put in their houses and homes for people to go And yet Abraham heard the voice of God say, Go, and he got up and went. Now, five thousand years ago, getting up and moving a few hundred miles wasn't such an easy task to do. You couldn't just pack your stuff and load it into a car or a van and move it across the desert. Abraham had to, to pack up his, his wife, Sarah. He had to pack up all of his belongings. He had to load them onto the goats. He had all of his flocks and his, and his family and those who would travel with him. He had his servants, and they had to gather everything up, and they had to make their little trek as they left town. And they had to go across the desert day by day to a place where God hadn't even showed them to go yet. And God counted that action as righteousness. God counts righteousness as when we hear the word, as when we hear the truth, and we move on that truth as righteousness. He said... What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and, in, and it was counted to him as righteousness, righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but is due. And, the, and to the one who does not work, but believes in him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. How many of you have 
jobs or have worked in your life? Just about everybody here? Okay. When you used to get up in the day and get ready and drive or go over to your place of employment and you work six, eight, ten, twelve hours a day, at the end of the, the pay period and you got your paycheck, did you count that paycheck as a gift? Oh, it was such a glorious thing that this company did. They just gave me money. It wasn't a gift, was it? It was you earned that, right? You worked for it. It was, it was hard earned by your labor, right? You know, the Word of God is truth. Does that make sense? What, what God said, what God spoke, he decreed, he brought it into existence, he made it eternal, right? So when God said, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, when he said those words over Abraham, he made that an eternal decree that would be forever. And that decree would pass down from Abraham to everyone who was an heir of Abraham. Not only a physical error, but an error by faith. We call Abraham the, the father of faith. Because he heard God and he listened. Therefore, anybody who hears God and listens is a child of Abraham. Because you did what Abraham did. Therefore, God's decree that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you falls upon all who act according to what God calls righteousness. Hearing the word of God, listening, moving in that word. He said, now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but his due. So just as you get up and go to work, or did get up and go to work, at the end of that pay period, you expected your paycheck, Right? Well, God's word is very much like that. Because God spoke truth, right? When God said, so when God said, if you do this action, I'm going to cause this to happen. Blessing and cursing. Right and wrong. Right? That's the truth. We know that when the rain falls out of the sky, it rains on the righteous just as it rains on the wicked. When the sun is beaming bright outside and causing the garden to grow, it doesn't matter if you're righteous or you're wicked. It's going to grow. Why? Because God decreed it. It's not righteousness. It's not a gift. It is a decree made by God. So the work, the expected result, is not a gift. It's a earned. Just as you, when you go to work, you expect that paycheck. As, as a believer in Christ, you expect God to do what God said God would do, right? Or do you expect God to do what you want Him to do? Sometimes both. Sometimes you want God to do what you want him to do, but you expect him to do what he said he did. God counts that belief as righteousness. Do you believe the word of God is true? Now, I ask this question a lot, and I have a lot of people tell me, yes, I believe that what God said is true. Yes. Okay. Do you type? You don't have to answer that question. But do you type? Do you give 10% of all your first fruits? That's what the Word of God says. Uh, chapter 3. Place your tithe, tithe in, into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And I will open up the doors of heaven, or the gates of heaven, as some Bibles say, and I will pour you out a blessing greater than you are able to receive. says, if you don't pay your tithe, what are you doing? 
you're robbing God. You're stealing from God. You know what the crime and the, the payment for uh, stealing was in the days of old? They'd cut off their hands, or at least one of them. You know why? Because it takes away your ability to earn. The process, the payment of theft, you take what's not yours, you take what's not owed to you, you are punished by your ability to produce and earn was taken away from you. That was the penalty, the price. So God says, if you don't pay your tithe, you're robbing me. So God takes away your ability to earn. Now translate that into the to now. What happens is, how many of you have ever experienced a time as a Christian going to church where you couldn't pay your tithe? Where you had a house payment or a car payment or you, you had your, your septic system broke or something happened to where you had to put your money there instead of pay your tithe. You say, I'll, I'll make that up next week or I'll catch you up later. It's just right now I've got to take care of this. It's, it, it's right here. It's in my face. I've got to do it right now. You, you ever been in that situation? I, I'll be honest. I've, I've been there. Uh, and, and what I did is I took care of the situation. And as a result, the following week or two, that I had to recuperate from that situation, I noticed it was really hard. That, that week that I didn't have the things I really wanted. I had to let things go to get caught back up. You guys ever experienced something like that? And, and as I grew in, in my Christianity, of course most of you know I later in life. I was in my early 30s, which now seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't. I noticed as I got saved and I started paying my tithe on a, a, on a regular basis that the amount of money that I earned really didn't matter. That I always had what I needed, and usually extra. I would go to church, I'd give my, my 10% and, and and things always went well. Even when bad things would happen, I gave my 10% and I always had enough. And if I didn't have enough, somehow or another, it showed up. Someone would either, you know, take me out to eat when I didn't have money to go eat or... or I can think of a lot of things, but I don't want to, want to say most of them. But God would provide through people what I needed to get to that week, even though I was short monetary. He always provided. So his word in Malachi, pay your tithe, in, in my experience, always proved as true. I don't have to question God about tithing because he's, he showed me through my experience that that's true. So when now when I'm up against it, my tithe will come out first before anything else. Why? Because I know that God's going to provide. I have learned, my own experience has taught me that I can trust God to take care of me. Truth. God decreed that in his word. So my work in tithing is not a gift. It's over. Why? Because I'm obedient. God said, this is what I'm going to do. Period. Do you know that someone who's never met Jesus Christ can go pay their tithe into a church and receive a blessing from God that's greater than they know how to receive? Because God said it. If you put your tithe into my storehouse, 
If you'll give me mine, I will provide for you. If you withhold from me, I will withhold from you. That's the truth. The Ten Commandments say, Honor your father and mother so that you may live long. So, so God says that if you honor your parents, that you will live a long life. Well, I can't personally testify to that just yet, but I'm working on it. But God said it. And if what God says is the truth, then I can count on the fact that if I honor my parents, then I'm going to live long. That's the truth. That's not a gift. It's due. That's what he's saying right here. The word of God is true, and it will carry out no matter what. Now, what about salvation? Do you know what Scripture says on how to be saved? What's the Bible say? What's God say on salvation? If you believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin, born of God, that he lived a perfect life, that he was accused of sin that he didn't commit, that he was arrested, that he was tried, that he was convicted of sins that everybody else committed, he carried his cross up the mountain, he hung on the cross. He gave his life. He shed his blood. He descended on the third day. God raised him from the dead. He gave you life. If you believe that God paid the price for your sins, he guaranteed you salvation. I will save you if you call on me. Is that what it said? Did he say, if you call upon me, I'm going to make everything perfect in your life and you're never going to have any issues and nothing's ever going to go wrong and you're never going to have to worry about paying your bills and you're not going to experience any tragedy, you're never going to get sick? Did he say that? No. That's not in there. Will God heal you? Yes. Will God heal you always? No. Will God restore you? Yes. Will He restore you all the time? No. You see, He said, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not count his sin. He didn't say that you're without trouble or without hardship. He doesn't say that you'll be without tragedy in your life. He just says that you will be blessed. So he goes from verse 4. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as is due. To the one who does not work, but believes in him, who, is justified, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. So righteousness you're deemed righteous because you've chosen to believe in God. The works of the law are things that God decreed that will happen. Period. Can a sinner be saved? I can answer that one. Can a sinner be saved? Well, yes. Yeah. Can, a, can a sinner experience the blessings and the cursings of the law of God? Or are they reserved for the righteous? The law of God was given to the world so that we might know sin. So that we know what sin is. So if a sinner was given the law so that they would know that they were sinners, so that they could be saved, 
then the law of God holds true. So if they are good people, and they do what's right, and they help the needy, and they provide for the sick, and they take care of their, their parents, and they, they give money to, to put food in, in God's storehouses, then all the promises that God made, they're going to experience. Because it's a law. It's the truth. You experience the truth of God in your life. Do you live by the Word of God? When you go through the book, through the Old Testament, New Testament, there are literally hundreds of statements that are promises or cursings. People don't like the word cursings, but it, it's cursing. Bad things happen, bad results from a bad situation. But the Bible has a bunch of decrees that say, if you do this, this is going to happen. If you do this, this is going to happen. If you do this, this is going to happen. Both good and bad. Blessing and cursing. You look into the world of the sinner. You look into the world of those who do not know Christ at all. And you see drug abuse. You see addictions to alcohol. You see idol worship. You see, have you ever watched that? There's a, there's a commercial. I think it's a state farm commercial, maybe a farm bureau commercial. The guy with the Mustang. You see this picture of a great big old baby out in the parking lot, and this guy running to it to keep his shopping cart from hitting it. You know, see him outside, baby playing in the water. He's got the water hose out. And he's just taking care of the baby. And, and all of a sudden, you see, you see the baby sitting next to a fire hydrant. Then all of a sudden there's a picture of a car instead of a baby. He, he's idolized that, that, that vehicle and put it in the place of a human being, of a child. He worshipped it, in other words. We, we see, when you, when you look through the eyes of the world, you see the evidence the fruit of their life. They put all the emphasis on the wrong things, and they suffer all the results of doing that. I said sinners, and I really can't just say sinners there because, well, I know of one or two Christians that, that may fall into some of those categories. Sometimes we, we as Christians,